Even though I usually showcase the positive aspects of the Super Mario Bros. franchise, there are times I'd like to focus on the flip side, as it is interesting to point out some of the shortcomings of such an illustrious series. One of these that can be hit or miss from time to time are the levels, where today, I specifically want to look at the most boring ones that you can play within every single game, explaining just exactly what makes them that way. Oh yeah, and before we get started with everything, my name is Copycat, and if you haven't yet, then please subscribe to my channel, hitting that bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. Of course, the very first game to be released in the franchise is Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo Entertainment System, where there's one level that I want to show off, as it's a very boring experience in World 3-2. I think that the main problem with this nighttime overworld stage is that it gives you a star early on that allows you to just easily kill the Koopas and Goombas on your way to the flagpole. Now, if this star was hard to find, this would be a very different story, but this power-up is essentially handed to you on a silver platter. And on top of that, there's no secret sub-area or a 1-up mushroom to find, so it's not like you're missing out on any goodies, just running right to the end. The second Western-specific entry in the original trilogy is Super Mario Bros. 2 that was released for the NES in 1988, having a couple levels that definitely could be considered boring, starting with the Desert Base World 2-2. I think that this is all just because it's way too similar to the previous stage, World 2-1 with both revolving around the annoying sand digging mechanic, needing to do just that while dodging enemies to progress forward. Uh, I mean, downward. Maybe I've just had to go through this way too much, and after several dozen playthroughs, I can definitely say this has become tedious, to the point where I'm just sort of over it. The other one I want to look at is World 6-1, which has the annoying mechanic of having to go down the right jar to find the key, which for a new player can be a nightmare, but for a returning player who's remembered which one to enter, this just becomes a cakewalk. On top of that, the rest of the stage doesn't really make up for it, as it's just way too simplistic to even be somewhat interesting. The final of the original trilogy is Super Mario Bros. 3 that came out in North America in 1990. Having a handful of boring levels I want to look at, starting with the hand trap ones that show up in the dark lands of World 8. Although the concept is cool, as when you walk over its overworld square a hand reaches out and grabs you, the levels are just way too short, which is an extreme letdown, where in most instances, if you have a Super Leaf, you can just fly right through them. Also, you don't even have to play all of them, as you're usually able to skip a few on your way to the real Dark Lands, so a moment at first that you think you want to remember, unfortunately becomes forgettable. A regular level that I can honestly say is a total snooze fest is World 2-2, as it's a super short experience that has absolutely no risk involved at all. Now, it isn't completely devoid of anything, but the one mechanic that's present has you riding a moving platform across a small body of water and collecting coins along the way, which is sort of disappointing as you don't even have to use it to get to the end, and it's really just there to collect the goodies. Next, we're gonna move to the Super Mario Bros. Lost Levels entry that was only released in Western markets in the Super Mario All-Stars SNES collection, having one level that's boring for all the wrong reasons in World 9-3, the only thing that really can be found in this strange stage is Bowser's brother, who is the protector of an outdoor castle, and instead of needing to be defeated via bridge axe, here you just need to run past it. Now this can be sorta tough especially if you're not powered up, but there is a workaround as you can actually just get above the area the Koopa is located, bypassing it completely just running to the end. This is just another letdown for the stage, as it makes something that could have been good just very bland. Honestly, I had a lot of trouble picking the most boring level from Super Mario Land for the Game Boy, mainly because there's only 12 of them in total, and they all somewhat serve a purpose. But in the end, I decided to go with the very first in World 1-1. This is only because of how easy and simple the stage really is, offering you no real challenge and basically handing you a star to kill all of the enemies. I do get that this one's just supposed to teach you about the mechanics of how you move in this game, but it being one of the 12 and not some sort of demo really does hold it back. Next to come out in the franchise is the SNES Super Mario World game, which actually has two levels that we can look at, starting with the Switch houses that you have to visit to activate the dotted line blocks. Even though these hidden places are fun to find, there's just not much to do in them other than collect a lot of coins and trigger the giant switch. 
I do wish these were a bit longer, but I guess they do serve their purpose, and make it clear to the player that this is a pretty good secret to find. The other level I want to talk about that really just sorta sucks is Star World 2, which is an underwater one full of Rip Van Fish and blurps. What's unfortunate here is that the developers put a star right at the beginning that allows you to defeat all of them with really no repercussion, allowing you to make it to the end and also find the secret exit. It is pretty odd as most of the other Star World and Special World levels are pretty tough, so this one just totally sticks out in my mind as it's way too easy. The second handheld entry in the franchise is Super Mario Land 2 that also came out for the Game Boy, but this time in 1992. Having a couple special levels that I think are pretty tame, in the Tree Zone one and the Pumpkin Zone one. These just consist of a bunch of coins to collect and really just act as sort of a bonus room, not needing to complete them to get one of the six coins, so you don't necessarily even have to visit them at all. Now, just as a note, I did want to include Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island in this video, but unfortunately there's not really a boring level to be found in that fantastic entry, so I just wanted to say that in future videos I will include this game, so look forward for that to come. The very first 3D based title featuring our mustachioed hero is Super Mario 64 for the N64, where I think most people would agree that Dire Dire Docks is definitely its most boring. Now, this is basically due to the amount of lame underwater sections mixed with a feeling of unfinished out of water sections, leading to a lot of underwhelming moments that just could have been better. I guess you could argue that Jolly Roger Bay has the same feel, but I would say that its stars are much more interesting to collect and offer more of a variety of challenges. I feel like water based stages are hard to pull off if they aren't paired with some sort of unique mechanic, where Wet Dry World is a perfect example of how to do this right. Next to be released is Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube, where if I'd have to pick a boring level out of all the main courses, then I'd have to go with Serena Beach. This is one of the oddest in terms of layout in the entire game, as when you first enter it, you notice that it's just a hotel surrounded by a pretty small beach area. The hotel itself isn't that spectacular, as it's very close quarters inside of it, and it doesn't really require you at all to use your flood to platform, which sort of goes against the point of the gameplay, but oh well. Now, I will say that the stars within it are pretty interesting, and definitely are boring as the Phantom Manta and Big Boo boss battles alone are great moments. It just sucks that the setting they're found within isn't a bit better. Nintendo would eventually return the series to its 2D roots, with the creation of new Super Mario Bros. for the dual screen system, where one level I felt was a bit underwhelming when I first played it is World 3B. This is a sky base slash pipe world stage, where there's tons of piranha plants coming out of pipes at you, where you just need to be patient and avoid them, or of course be powered up with a fire flower to defeat them. There's just nothing special about this one to make it a memorable experience at all. And I think at this point in the Mario series, players are too good to really find problems with piranha plants. Up next is the space based Super Mario Galaxy Wii entry that came out for the system in 2007 where there's one galaxy that instantly came to my mind when I thought of boring in the Grand Finale Galaxy, only because you need to do a lot to unlock it, and you don't get a lot out of it. This involves you having to collect 120 Power Stars as both Mario and Luigi, which just returns you to the Castle Courtyard, where you need to collect 100 Purple Coins. Yeah, that's all you get for completing such a monumental task, which does suck as you'd expect a super secret hard level or something like that, and instead, you get this thing that's not even worth your time. One of the more regular levels that I found a bit uninteresting is the Snowcap Galaxy, as it's incredibly small, just containing a cylindrical planet where you need to use the Wemo cursor to clear away snow. Doing this, you have to uncover the different bunnies, then chase them down, and get three of them to get the star. Something that's not exactly new to the series, so it feels a bit repetitive. The second installment of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries came out for the Wii in 2009, where there's only one level I wanted to showcase that fits the category of this video in World 7-5. This is the one full of the Foo Cloud foes, as their cloud attacks cover most of the screen, but really, they're just not. On top of that, you're handed a few propeller shrooms throughout the course, so the risky void sections aren't really that risky anymore, taking away the one thing that might have saved this level. Okay, maybe I am just hating a bit, and I feel like it could have been so much better, 
So I'd love to know what you think, and maybe you choose another one in the comments below. The second Super Mario Galaxy title came up for the Wii in 2010, and has two galaxies I want to look at, starting with a throwback one. It's pretty obvious why I included this one, as it's really just a remake of Womp's Fortress from Super Mario 64. And I think this really just cheapens the experience, where it doesn't fit at all within the space entry. I feel like they should have combined elements of past levels into one to make a unique experience, and not just something we've played many many times before. The other that I felt didn't live up to expectations is the Sweet Mystery Galaxy, which features you having to ride your dino buddy Yoshi, and eat a ball berry so you can reveal the path in front of you. I guess I just don't really think that this is that fun of gameplay, but I could be wrong. Although in getting Yoshi, I do expect more platforming than just sort of tiptoeing through a stage. Nintendo would perfectly blend aspects of the franchise's 2D and 3D gameplay with the release of Super Mario 3D Land for the 3DS, which has one type of level that's sort of just a waste of time in the mystery box ones. These are just bonus rooms unlocked with star coins where you need to defeat enemies to collect goodies, which include things like coins, power-ups, and 1-ups. These, however, get boring very, very quickly. And this is due to how small these boxes are, and how short of an experience completing one is. Usually only taking a few seconds to defeat every baddie. Now in terms of full-fledged stages, one that I think most would say is boring is World 3-2, which is all based within an underwater setting, with very little to do within it. I get that at the time of its release, this was seen as unique, due to it feeling like an old 2D level but in a 3D environment, but in hindsight, there's just really not much to do here. Especially if you're powered up in Fireflyer form, as you can just use that to hold back any enemies. The third installment of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries, for some reason given the moniker of being the second, came up for the 3DS in 2012, where by far the most boring levels from it are definitely the rainbow ones. These are secret courses found in each world that only unlock if you finish a level within that world where the last two digits on the timer match the number of the current world you're in, if that makes sense. This then lets you access these rainbow themed coin heavens, which aren't exactly a full on platforming experience, and are really just bonus rooms made for you to collect a gargantuan amount of coins. I obviously hate this game for many reasons, but the gimmicky coin collecting aspect of it is definitely my least favorite as I feel like they're just a handout for free in this game, and they're literally everywhere, and there's no excitement in finding them. The final entry of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries came up for the Wii U, then was released years later in deluxe version on the Switch. Having a couple boring levels that I want to look at, starting with Acorn Plains 5, also known as Rise of the Piranha Plants. If a level has Piranha Plants, and you're just handed a Fire Flower for free, then you know it's going to be a cakewalk. Which at this point Nintendo should understand that most Mario players are returning to the franchise and aren't brand new players that need their hands held. I will applaud them though, as I feel like they understood this when they released the new Super Luigi U DLC, which contained much harder versions of levels than what were seen in the base game, leading to a very tough but special unique experience. The other I want to showcase is Sparkling Waters 4, also known as Urchin Shoals which has a mixture of above ground and underwater elements, needing to use the geysers in some instances as platforms to move forward. Also, like the name suggests, there are urchin enemies trying to block your path in many sections, where you just need to be patient and wait for them to clear to properly move forward. I will say this game probably has the best level design in the subseries, so I am nitpicking a bit for them to fit within the parameters of this video. Next to be released in the series is Super Mario 3D World, that first came out on the Wii U, then was later re-released on the Switch, having three stages that I found to be quite boring, starting with one of the smallest in the game, Backstreet Bustle. I mean, you literally can see the end goal from your starting position, with you just needing to use the Double Cherry power-up to multiply yourself, and then use those on the different lifts to find the green stars and stamps. I guess this is just made to teach you how to properly use the power-up, but it's unfortunately just way too quick to even be considered fun. Another I didn't really enjoy too much is the Pretty Plaza Panic level of World 3, which is another very small course where again, you can see the end flagpole from the start. This one at least has a few moments with some risks due to the mini moving platforms, but there just isn't enough here to ensure that it's considered good. On top of that, if you're using a character like Peach or are powered up with something like a Super Leaf, 
This will keep you in the air for way longer, and you can pretty much just skip everything. The third and final stages I want to mention as being boring are some of the earlier Captain Toad base ones, as they're super rudimentary feeling, especially when compared to the full Captain Toad treasure tracker entry. I get even having this bonus levels in the game is a treat, as it is very different in needing to use a character that can't run or jump. And I am appreciative still, as it is interesting to see where such a great idea came to fruition. In Super Mario Odyssey for the Switch, one kingdom that I instantly thought was boring the first time I played it was the Cloud one. Only because it's really devoid of anything other than a quick boss battle against Bowser. Now, I really mean anything, as the kingdom itself is just a couple of round platforms with only a few moons to collect on them that are mostly pretty lame. It sort of seems like they just ran out of time when they were designing this level, but left it in due to the boss fight, and not knowing how to change it, or maybe not wanting to change it, I don't know. Next up is the Bowser's Fury game mode that was bundled alongside that Super Mario 3D World Switch re-release I talked about earlier, where in my opinion the most boring area from it has to be Fort Flaptrap. This section of Lake Lapcat is just incredibly underwhelming as it focuses on the red-blue panels that flip every time that you jump. But, there's just not enough of this mechanic, and when it is used, there's just not any risk involved. The bullies are really the only thing that give you any trouble here. And even then, I don't think they ever even dealt me damage or even touched me at all, so it's not like they became a factor. I will give it a bit of a pass, as this game is very unique and done differently than any other entry before it. But that doesn't mean that there aren't some moments that are a bit of a letdown. The final of the series and most recent game to be released in the franchise is Super Mario Bros. Wonder for the Nintendo Switch, where there's one level that's not only boring but somewhat tedious to play, and the empty park token search one that's found in the Shining Falls. Here, this one relies on you needing to find the tokens within hidden blocks placed in very inconspicuous spots in the stage most times located somewhere within the water running down from the clouds. I actually struggle on this one as a few of them are so well hidden that I'll even admit I needed to use a guide to find them. Something I really hate doing, especially if the challenge itself isn't even that great to play through. Alright that's gonna be it for today's video guys, I really hope you did enjoy this one. If you did please leave me a like, comment below what you thought about it, and of course subscribe to my channel. Also, please go follow my Instagram at CopycatGamer. There I upload some cool clips and items for my collection that you won't see anywhere else. Hope you guys all have a good day and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!